of our cities this morning. God is worthy of worship today. Sing on, oh you heavens, let the praise go up as the walls come down. Oh creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. Oh these children, be hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Swing wide, for oh, you hear us. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. Oh, creation, everything with bread, repeat the sound. All oh, these children, clean hands, pure hearts, good praise, good God. His name is Jesus. Jesus 
Come on, church. Worthy is He. He has always been worthy. He will always be worthy. He is worthy in the house today. His name is great and worthy to be praised. Won't you give Him one more shout of praise? Glorify His name. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship Him with all our hearts. We are so thankful that this God that we serve is consistent. That He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That He doesn't change. He is, was, He will always be. He is trustworthy and, and we can believe in Him. He is Yahweh, the God with me. Yahweh the God with me. He is a relational God. He wants to be in relationship with us. And when we go into relationship with someone, it's good to know that they are consistent. And He is forever consistent. He is forever King of Kings. He is forever Lord of Lords. He is forever seated on the throne. He is forever for you. He is forever on your side. He is forever there for you. He will forever make a way where there seems to me no way. He is forever your Redeemer. He is forever our Savior. And we're so thankful. And, and this God can truly turn graves uh, into, uh, what's the words? Thank you. Graves into gardens. He can turn the seas into highways. Turn bones into armies. He's the God that gives you peace within the storm. He's the God that walks the journey with you. He's the God that brings wisdom when there's confusion. And He's the God that helps us to finish strong. This is the God that wants to be in relationship with you personally today. The writer says this, we, we know that the Son of God has come and He has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. We now live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God and He is eternal life. That is the God that we're in the house today to worship, to honor and to glorify. So maybe where you're standing today, you're experiencing some storms within your life. Maybe you're going through some things right now that's, that's maybe bringing confusion or maybe bringing distraction or, or maybe it feels like your life is going to go down a journey that you are hoping it's not going to go on. And that might be in your marriage. It might be in your finances, in your business, in your friendships, in these kind of things. And, and today we know that God has the answer. God is the answer and that we can come to Him and He said that we shouldn't be anxious about anything but pray about everything and then His peace will settle on us in that moment. And, and so today, there might be some things that you have to do to experience the breakthrough. You might have to get into the Word. You might have to get around some people that are good friends that will lead you in godly manners. You might have to get into church a little bit more. You might have to get into church on time. But we might have to do some things. But even with those things, we we're always going to rely on God. We're always going to rely that He's going to give us the breakthrough in it. And, and the Bible gives us clear direction. How, how do we come to Him when we want breakthrough? Is we humble ourselves. And so today we're going to humble ourselves. We're going to remove those things in our life. We're going to push it away. Those things that are distracting us from our walk with Him. Those sinful things that are breaking breakdown in our relationship with Him. And we're going to pray. And then we're going to trust He's going to heal the way that He promises in His Word. You guys ready to pray today? Whatever you have in your heart, whatever is, is standing between you and God, whatever is not helping you go through to the next level, keep that before you right now as we pray. Father, we are thankful that breakthrough is in you. You're the only one we trust. You are forever Yahweh. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And, and the promises you made back in the Old Testament is still the promises today, Father. We believe that the way you've always done miracles, you can do today. And because of that, we bring marriages before you. We bring businesses before you. We bring financial stress and constraints, families with challenges, health issues. We lay all of them before you this morning, Father. You know each person in the house. You know each situation they're going through, Father. And we pray that you will intercede, intervene into each of those circumstances and we are trusting for testimonies that will bring glory and honor to your name as you bring breakthrough in Jesus name we pray amen 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 such a good day we're ready for a great day in the house before you grab your seat turn to somebody around you give them a high five get to know someone tell them summer has arrived
This course is going to teach us how to discern the wilderness season. Okay, very important. Number two, show us from scripture the appropriate behavior in the wilderness. And number three, you're gonna discover the benefits of the wilderness. You know, the enemy's dead, <laughs> but he's still deadly. His power's broken, but he's still talking. And Jesus is gonna show us in these next few weeks together how to stop listening to him and start walking with Christ. All of us have a call of God on our life, and every single one of us are given unique gifts by God to accomplish that calling. People are drawing back. They're shrinking in fear. Instead, we should be multiplying, advancing the kingdom. This is what we are called to do. This course will certainly build your faith to do that. Awesome. A Grow Night start on the 17th. I want to encourage you, if you've never joined us for a Grow Night, come and join us for one of these courses. It's an amazing time to spend together and to grow in God's Word and to get more information about certain subject matters. A great time to spend, spend outside of Sunday, to spend a little bit more time to refocus us, to get back into things and to be with people in the church where we grow together and focus on a specific subject a little bit and, and grow in that area. And I can promise you every week, in every session, there will be something that you can take into your life and go and apply as we are being discipled to be totally committed Christ followers. So come and register and come and join us. If you've never been on a grow course, we would love to see you there on Tuesday evenings as we spend some time together. Hope to see you there. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Don't, don't look back. In a year from now, I can promise you, you would go, I wish I started then. And so start today. Come and join us on one of those grow night courses. Well, welcome in church today. It's good to have everybody here. You guys ready for an awesome service today? You really ready for an awesome service today? Awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward to a great day in God's house today. And, and so welcome. Welcome online. It's good to have you join us. It's good to have you with us today. We'd really love to see you in the house. If it's all is capable or you're visiting in town, come and join us. We want to spend some time with you and have fellowship with you and come and enjoy the awesome atmosphere being in the house and being together. Our pastors are not with us today. I know you guys all miss them, but they're having a well-deserved break. And, and we really ask that you would carry them in prayer and you would pray for God's wisdom and, and His protection over them and the whole family and that God will lead them and constantly renew them in their vision and strength. And, and I know that they were looking forward to end the year strong. So in this time, we, are, we trust that they will recuperate and come back strong. But please keep them in your prayers continually. And uh, yeah, so today... If you are visiting us for the first time, it's such a great honor to have you with us. We always look forward to people visiting our church. And we know that in every week, in every service, there are people that has joined us for the first time. So whatever the reason that you're here every day, we are so glad that you are with us, that you're spending this time together. Church, won't you welcome those that are visiting us today for the first time. It's awesome to have you in the house and uh, looking forward to grow with you. If maybe you've been looking for a church or a place to call home, a place to be planted, because you know when you're planted, you can grow. And so we trust that this might be the place for you. So we invite you, come back for a few weeks, get to know a few people, and uh, maybe God will show you clearly that this is the house for you. And if that's maybe in your heart and you want to grow a little bit more, or know more about our church or what we stand for, what we believe, I want to encourage you as you go out the doors to the left-hand side, there's a section there, you will see it's called Next Steps. The guy that are there are uh, ready to answer you any questions you have, anything that you maybe want to know about, anything that you want to know more, more about our church. Go and check that out and, uh, and then come join. We look forward to seeing you next week back here again. All right, great. Watch the, watch the screens and then we'll get into the service. Hi, church. I hope you're well today. Pastor Shelley and myself and the girls are just taking a week off and we really wish that we could be with you today, but I know that you're going to have a great day in God's house and we trust in God that we're going to finish the year strong and what I want to do today is that I want to just encourage us in our giving, I want to read you a story about what God does in our life and through the church and you know what God is doing through Imagine Church is absolutely amazing. So many testimonies that we've been receiving about what God is doing in people's lives and how He's touching people's lives, healing families, changing children's lives, restoring relationships and just the breakthrough that people are experiencing in their life and it, it all happens because of what God does through the local church. There's a story in the Bible about a man that is wounded in life and how somebody comes along and, and just helps him to recover. And in Luke chapter 10, it says, Then a despised Samaritan came along 
And when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. And then he put the man on his own donkey and took him in to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If this bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. What an incredible story. This man's beaten up on the journey of life and he finds himself unable to progress. And a Samaritan, which would have been an ordinary man, it would have actually been somebody that was despised by society, comes along and he sees this man in pain and he takes care of him. He reaches out and he inconveniences himself. He gives of his resources to make sure that this man is healed. And, and he says to the innkeeper, if, if, if there's anything that goes over what I've already given you, I'll come back the next day and I'll make sure that I'll settle the bill, but just take care of this man. You see, the church is like an inn. It's a place where people come. They come hurting. They come broken. They, they come damaged by life's experiences. And when they get into the, the house of God, the presence of God comes in and does something incredible in their life. And God uses His presence to touch them. And He uses what we do as a church through our giving to create opportunity for people to be healed and to be restored and find salvation. And that's what our giving is. It's what a church is. It's about you and I giving of what we have so others can experience the goodness of God. And, and like I said earlier, God is doing incredible things in people's lives. And I want to encourage you today that... I our giving is making a difference and your giving is changing other people's lives. And, and I love the story is that it says that he gave on the first time that he came to the inn. And it says when he came the next day, he gave whatever he needed to. It talks to us that our giving is not a once-off thing. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's a continual action. And today I want to encourage us so that when we give today, remember that through our giving, God is changing people's lives. Let's pray as we prepare our hearts to give today. Father, as we come to you and we give to you today, we thank you for all that you're doing in people's lives, Lord. We thank you, God, that we can be a part of that. And as we give today, God, I pray for every person giving, Lord. I pray that you would bless them, you would provide for them, and you would protect them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today, you're going to be blessed with the Word of God. I know that you're going to be encouraged through God's Word, and we are so delighted to have Pastor Larry Elliott with us. He's from Rama South Coast Family Church down in the south coast of uh, Natal. And whenever you're in that area, go past, visit their church, a great church there. Uh, today, he's going to bring the word to us. And I want to encourage you to open up your heart, lean in, shout amen, be engaged in the service and allow God to speak to you. And so in true Imagine Church style, why don't we stand to our feet and welcome Pastor Larry as he brings the Word of God. Enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. How are we all doing this morning? Come on, let's give Jesus the big praise offering this morning. He's our Lord and our Saviour. He's the most important person in our lives. Hallelujah. So good to be with you this morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus before you're seated. Won't you turn to 47 people? Okay, it's gonna take too much of my time. Turn to two people, give them a high five, say you look amazing this morning. And then tell them you look righteous this morning. And then you may be seated. I just want to introduce you to my beautiful wife, Mandy. And for those of you who don't know, she is Donovan's oldest, older sister, not oldest, older sister. And uh, we're so grateful that we can be here in the house. Please just stand and greet the people. And uh, together we pastor the best church in South Africa. Uh, I'm preaching today at the second best church. It... What? Now, I know you think this is the best church in South Africa, and so you should. And so you should, that's why you're here. And I just wanna honor your uh, pastors. They are amazing leaders. Uh, they love Jesus. They built a great church here. And I know they love you, and they love the kingdom of God. And so we really love and appreciate them. Why don't you give your hair, your, put your hands together for your pastors and just appreciate them this morning. Well, it's such a joy to be with you today and I'm really excited to bring uh, the Word of God. Are you ready for the Word this morning? 
I wanna talk to you today about staying the course. Look at the person next to you and say, run your race. And we read here in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse seven, the apostle Paul speaking to his spiritual son, Timothy, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And we see that Apostle Paul was ending the end of his life and he was passing the baton, so to speak, onto Timothy and the disciples that he'd raised up. And he was saying to them, listen, there was a course I needed to run. There was a race I was in and and I fought the good fight. Notice it was a fight, but it was a good fight. Look at the person next to you, say, are you fighting the good fight? And the reality is we do not wanna get to the end of our lives and realize we've been in a race, but we've been running the wrong race. There's an old proverb which many motivational speakers use, and it goes like this, many aspiring people have taken time and effort to climb the ladder of success through their lives, only to reach the top at the end of their lives and discover that the ladder was standing against the wrong wall. And you and I need to be sure that if we're climbing the ladder of success, if we're running the race, you see the world wants to define what being successful is, what being great is. They, they wanna tell you, no, if you have this, then you're successful. If you accomplish that, then you're great. And if you do this, but in, in saying that, they're also saying, if you don't do that and you don't have this, then you haven't made it. And how you know the world is incorrect in defining what living life is because the only way to define what life is is by reading your Bible and discovering God's plan and God's purpose for you and for mankind. And so Paul goes on in verse seven in the message translation, it's so beautiful, it says, you take over, I'm about to die, my life in an offering, an offering on God's altar. This is the only race worth running. This is the only race worth running. And in other words, I've run hard right to the finish and I've believed it all the way. Say, I've believed it all the way. Now listen, Paul wasn't perfect, Paul made mistakes. If you read the Bible, you'll see he got into arguments about different things. He at some point in his life went through so many trials and circumstances, he was shipwrecked. And I'm sure there were moments in his life where he wondered, where is God in this? How am I gonna get through this? How will I negotiate through this situation? But you know, through all of that, he looked back on his life and he saw God was faithful, God's word was true, and he had held to his faith. He had trusted God and he finished his course. Say, I'm gonna finish my course. And so we see today that staying the course means keeping the faith. And keeping the faith means that I no longer live for myself but I have an eternity mindset. I realize the race I'm running here on earth is defined by how I end my race and who I influence for eternity. That's what being a disciple is. It's serving Jesus and following Christ's plan for our lives, being part of building and establishing the kingdom of God. In the Amplified, it puts it over so beautifully. In verse seven, he says, I have fought the good fight, the worthy, honorable and noble fight. I have kept the faith. I've held firmly to what I believe. I've held firmly to what I know the word to say. So staying the course means that I don't get caught up in the politics of life. I don't let the obstacles that come my way stop me or deter me from staying on the course. I don't get caught up in in the things that would distract from who God's called me to be. I keep my eyes on the Lord. I keep my eyes on Jesus. And in those obstacles, I aim to please God. I live to honor the leaders that God has placed in my life and fulfill the vision of establishing God's kingdom and fulfilling what God has placed on my life. Look at the person next to you, say, you are a champion. So you see, we need to ask ourselves this question then. On what wall should my ladder be leaning? So that I'm sure I'm running the right race, that I'm staying the course. Well, if we 
turn to scripture, we discover this, that people are God's building. And so we realize today that people are always God's priority. Salvation is the wall and the building is the kingdom of God. And so if I'm laboring in the kingdom, if I'm building the kingdom, then I'm climbing the ladder of success because it is all about people. It's about winning others. It's about consolidating and establishing them. It's about discipling them, which means helping them get on the course and run their race and then sending them out to do the same thing for somebody else. You see, I don't know about you, but I'm here because someone else took an interest in me. Someone else cared enough about me and my family to say, listen, you need Jesus in your life and here's how you can get connected with him and here's how to follow him and here's how to serve him. The truth is God had someone else in mind when he saved you. And if we're gonna be selfish and just live our lives for what we get out of it, we're gonna miss out on everything that God has for us to accomplish. In Ephesians 2 verse 20 to 22, it puts it across so beautifully. It says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fit together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. So if we're gonna run our race, if we're gonna stay this course, there are a few things we need to be aware of and we need to understand. And number one is we need to recognize that we have been called. Say, I am called this morning. You see, and sometimes what we think is we'll look at certain people and, and we'll look at certain preachers or pastors or churches and we say, yeah, no, they definitely called as if we're not. And I wanna encourage you today, you have been called with a holy calling. Have a look at 2 Timothy chapter one and verse nine. It says, he has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Wow, you're not just called, but you have a holy call, hallelujah. And notice it's not according to your works, but it's according to his own purpose and grace, which has been given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So here's the thing, you need to be convicted in your spirit. You need to believe that you are called, not only called, but you're called by name. You see, when you're convicted of that, conviction is so important in your faith because without conviction, you don't know what you believe. And so when storm come, when a problem comes, when a situation comes, it can so easily bump you off where you need to be going. But when you have a conviction, you remain intentional. You remain focused, can you say amen? And so what happens is all that obstacle becomes, all that storm becomes is just another opportunity to see how great God is, to see how faithful God is, to see the word working in your life. You see, and then others will look at you and say, wow, how did you get through that? And you can turn to them and say, I'm so glad you asked. And you get to witness. You get to share the goodness of God that will in turn build them. The second thing you need to understand this morning is you need to know not only are you called, but you are called with a purpose. Say, I have purpose this morning. And you see, if you're gonna run your race, then you need to know what your purpose is. In Isaiah 45 verse three, it says this, a promise that the prophet Isaiah shared with the nation of Israel. And we can apply it to our lives today. It says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who have called you by your name am the God of Israel. So when we start to recognize our call, when we start to recognize that God has called us and purposed us, you know what happens? We step into his provision. And he begins to share secrets with us, unpack things in our lives that we didn't previously understand so that we can walk in the fullness of his provision so that we can complete the course he's put in front of us. And you see, this happens in layers. It doesn't happen all at once because God understands it's line upon line, 
precept upon precept. So as I get established in truth, as I understand that truth and walk in that truth and apply that to my life and I'm faithful in it, God can unpack the next level or the next layer of what that means because now he can trust me because I've proved to him I'm walking in what he already gave me. And you see, sometimes we miss out on that blessing and that favor in an area because we're being unfaithful in an area God's already shown us something. And so obedience becomes part of running that race. So let's talk about our purpose. You see, establishing and discovering your purpose is so important. And the thing is this, is that purpose, when we hear the word of God, can be very general. Not in a negative way, in a positive way. So how does it become specific for my life? How do I know specifically what it is God wants me to do with the word he's given me? Well, the the reality is this, is I start to believe in my call and I start to step out and trust God in his word. The word that is general becomes specific for me. Let me give you an example. How many know the Bible says that you should forgive so that you can be forgiven? How many know that's very general? But when I become a doer of that, then it becomes specific. In other words, who is it in my life that I actually need to forgive? And it needs to become a name and a person or a situation. Guess what happened? The general word became the specific word for me. And that's how I discover my purpose, by stepping out and being a doer of the word. In Matthew 28, there's another good example. It says in verse 19 and 20, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. How many know that's a very general commission? It's a very powerful commission, but how does it become specific? Is God telling me to go to China? Is he telling me to go to Togo? Is he telling me to move to the South Coast? The only way I discover that is by applying it to my life and suddenly I discover that firstly, I'm in the right place at the right time because I start every work by being in the lo- every week by being in the local church, hearing the word, worshiping God, getting uh, inspiration into my spirit from the word of God and then guess what? I fellowship with other believers so now I'm empowered to step into tomorrow and face whatever it is comes my way. And when I take what I hear on a Sunday and I apply it on a Monday, it means that now God wants me to disciple my world, where I live, in my family, in my neighbor, in my workplace, and wherever I find myself, in the spa that I shop, amen? You get opportunities every day to present the gospel, to be a blessing, to share the love of Christ, amen? And when you take that, you're stepping into your purpose and you're discovering God's specific purpose for you. And you know what's beautiful about it? Everything becomes an opportunity. You go into the spa and the teller treats you badly and the teller's rude or maybe the teller doesn't know what to do and you wanna get angry and mad. Has that ever happened to anyone? Oh, not, okay. It only happens on the South Coast, right? Yeah, when all of you come on holiday. (laughs) You see, now you have an opportunity, you have a decision to make. Am I gonna live on purpose? And am I gonna run my race? Or am I gonna get upset and let the teller know what I feel? You shouldn't have done that. Why are you doing this? How long is it gonna take? Get into the flesh? Or I can look at it and say, ma'am, I can see you having a tough day, can I pray with you? Is there something in your life that I can help you with? Come on, you look so wonderful today. I just want you to thank you for serving me. You see, you've just taken your calling and you've made it a purpose. And you can impact someone's life in a moment by not getting into the flesh and walking in the spirit. Look at the person next to you, say, man, you look even better than just now. Yeah, because the word of God makes the difference. Can you say amen? Amen. So for the rest of our time this morning, I wanna talk to you about three areas or three things that Paul applied to his life. They became part of his life. He he implemented them in his life and, and let them be a lifestyle and it helped him to fight the good fight, to stay the course 
Amen. So let me give them to you and then we'll spend a little bit of time on each of them. Number one is Paul learned to trust God. Every day Paul learned to trust God. And I want you to know trust isn't always easy when the storms are blowing and things look very uncomfortable. Number two, the second thing is this, Paul developed the fruit of patience in his life. Look at the person next to you, say patience. How many know that's the word we all love to hate? It's like we talk about all the other fruit, all the nice fruit, but we leave patience out because sometimes it can be so difficult to apply. And then the third thing, uh, and sorry, these, these seem to get worse as we go along, but I'm, I'm gonna try and make it sound nice. The third one is humility. Paul learned to be humble. He, he learned to develop humility. Would you just say it with me? Say humility. No, 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 don't stutter. Say it nicely. Say humility. Humility. So let's dig into these a little bit this morning. Number one, let's talk about trust. In Proverbs 3, verse five to seven, we find an incredible scripture. It says, trust in the Lord with some of your heart. Sorry? Oh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. So, so he says this, how do you trust in the Lord with all your heart? You lean not to your own understanding. So he first gives you the, the, the thing you need to do and then he starts to explain it. What do we need to do? Trust the Lord with all of our heart. How do we do that? By not leaning on our own understanding. How you know that's where the rubber meets the road? Because I don't know about you, if you're like me, I mean, I can trust God until I try and figure it out. I can trust God until I'm like, okay, Lord, where are you? Uh, this isn't making sense to my mind. Uh, you know, can I maybe step in here and help you a little bit? I see, Lord, you're struggling a bit. <laughs> Any of you had that experience? So what does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Just, just do this with me, go. Just lean a little bit. Okay, which way are you leaning? <laughs> Let's lean to our right. All right, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not. Just look at the person next to you. Say, stop leaning. <laughs> you see, it's in the not leaning that we're trusting God with all our heart. And when we trust God with all our heart, look what happens. It goes on, it says, trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean not to my own understanding, in all my ways or in all your ways, acknowledge Him. So how do I trust in the Lord? I lean not to my own understanding. Number two, what do I do to trust in the Lord with all my heart? I acknowledge Him in all my ways. Ugh, this is getting so difficult. Because how many of you know we wanna acknowledge God most of the time, but not all of the time. For example, I'm driving down the road with Mandy in the car. She says something to me she shouldn't. And I look at her and say, you shouldn't have said that. Aren't you a woman of God? Don't you know who I am? And I get angry. Guess what? I'm not acknowledging the Lord in all my ways. And just to be honest, it's normally the other way around. But I mean, I'm preaching, I'm up here, I've got the mic. <laughs> Let's just roll with that a little bit. But you see, if I'm gonna trust the Lord, I've got to acknowledge Him in all my ways. And that means even when I'm struggling, even when I'm not getting it right, I can still acknowledge the Lord and say, Lord, you know what? I'm not doing great in this area, but I thank you. I'm trusting you, you're gonna help me get better. You're gonna help me do better in this area. We love to pray for other people. Lord, just help Mandy do better. And the Lord's like, well, why don't you do it first, Larry? Set the example, amen? So acknowledge him in all my ways and listen to this. He will direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So trusting the Lord involves all of those categories. But I wanna focus on two things. Let me first give you the definition of the word trust here from the Hebrew direct translation. It says, trusting is having a complete reliance 
and confidence in God as the one true, all-powerful, sovereign God who is the only one who can help you live a fruitful life. So trusting God is having confidence that He is who He says He is, that He'll do what He says He will do, and that He'll come through for you. But notice something else here that's really beautiful is this word direct. It says when we do this, what's He gonna do? He's gonna direct your path. In other words, He's gonna show you how to run your race. He's gonna show you how to stay on your course. And this word direct is beautiful because it actually means this. The word direct means this, that He Himself will make your path straight. He himself will remove the obstacles out of your way that are preventing you from running your race. And listen, under God's direction, he will ensure that you're prosperous and successful in whatever your endeavor is. Wow. So when I start to trust God, it unlocks things in the spiritual realm that empower me to keep running my race. Number two, patience. Say patience. All right, let's look at patience and patience we need if we're gonna finish strong. In James 1 verses one, it says, James, we'll read down to verse five, it says, James, a bond servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, you know, when I first read this, I really thought Pastor James had lost it. Because how do you, how do you counter joy when everything goes wrong? It doesn't make sense to the natural man. Well, you first gotta be trusting God because then you know you don't lean on your own understanding and you realize that what James was saying, the way you can count it all joy, look at the next word, it says knowing. You see, you can count it all joy when you know something. And what is it that you must know? That the testing of your faith produces patience and let patience have its full work so that you may be perfect, say perfect. Complete, say complete. And look at this, lacking nothing. So here's the thing, are you lacking some things? Then guess what? God needs you to develop some more patience. And how are you gonna develop that patience? You're gonna use your faith in your trials because that will make you strong when it comes to patience. Say, I'm patient. Now remember this, patience does not mean wait a little bit longer because that's all what we think patience means. Patience isn't waiting a little bit longer. Patience is how you wait a little bit longer. You see, patience is the ability to stay consistent and the same while things are not working out the way you want them to. So the fruit of patience empowers your faithfulness. It means you keep doing what you've always done according to the word, even although maybe yet you're not seeing the result you want. And when you grow to that place, God gives you an I promise. He says, you will be complete, lacking nothing. And then verse five, he gives you the key. He says, if you lack wisdom, ask me and I'll give it to you. So he's saying, even if you're struggling with the patience, if you're struggling in this area, just come to me, be honest, be open, ask for my wisdom and I will give it to you liberally. Hallelujah, patience is such a beautiful, beautiful fruit. And then finally, the third thing that Paul developed in his life that helped him to stay strong and to finish his race was he developed humility. And here in 1 Peter 5, verses five and six, it brings it over so beautifully. It says, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders. All of you, say all of us, clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you in due time. Here's the incredible thing about humility and the difference between pride and humility. You see, pride is you trying to lift yourself. And when you try and lift yourself, you've got to keep yourself there. Humility is recognizing that God's the one who will lift you. And when you let him lift you, he's the one that keeps you there. So you're able to rest and be who you are. 
I love to say it like this, humility is what protects your heart and keeps it tender. And you know why I know that? Because if you study the word humility in the Bible, if you take it from the old Hebrew, the, the word humility actually refers to an apron. And it tells the story of the servants and, and those who would serve in the olden days. The first thing they would do when they used to get to their workplace is they would get an apron out and they would put the apron on over their new clothes and they would tie that apron around themselves and guess what would happen? The apron would protect them from the mess of whatever they were doing. And it would mean when they got home at night and they took their apron off, they were still clean as they were when they left. And that's exactly what humility does. When you put humility on, when you clothe yourself with humility, guess what? It absorbs pride. It absorbs all the world wants to throw at us. It absorbs your arrogance. It absorbs whatever the enemy would try and do to you and it helps you stay humble. And now listen to this. The Bible says this, God resists the proud. There was a time in my life, just quickly, is there a reset button and we go, we can reset the time? No. I don't know about this church, they didn't give me a reset button. There was a time in my life where I was binding the devil. I was like, devil, I resist you. I stand against you. And one day I read the scripture and I'm like, hang on a minute. The Bible says, God will resist you if you're proud. And I just started to own up to the reality that I'd been walking in pride and it wasn't the devil at all, it was me. Because you see, the Bible says that he gives grace to the humble and grace is a divine empowerment to do what you couldn't do. Grace is an excuse, isn't an excuse to keep sinning and living your poor life. Grace empowers you to live your best life. And so I realized I was lacking grace. I was lacking the power and strength of God. And it was God couldn't get it to me because I was walking in pride. But the minute I put on, my apron of humility. God was able to pour His grace into my life and it helped me to stand up and He lifted me to a new level that I'd never seen before. I wanna encourage you this morning, run your race. Fight the good fight of faith. Finish your course. And one day when you get into heaven, God's gonna look at you and say, well done, you good and faithful I'm so grateful to be here this morning. I can sense God's glory here. From the time of the praise and worship this morning in the first service, God's presence. That's why we come to church, to encounter Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you were running your race, you are running your race, but you've grown weary. You're feeling a little bit jaded and tired. Or maybe you realize this morning, man, I, I'm running the race, but I'm on the wrong course. Lord, help me this morning. If that's you, I'd love to just pray for you. Just encourage you in your faith. If that's you, just raise your hand where you are. Say, man, I'm stepping back, back onto the course. I'm gonna run my race. Uh, I just want God to give me just a, a supernatural strength in my life. Father, thank you for every person right now. Let your anointing right now strengthen them in the inner man. Cause them to run and not grow weary. Cause them to have a walk that is worthy of you, fully pleasing you, being fruitful in every good work. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. And right now I'm gonna ask you to keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. Maybe you're here today, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You never accepted Him into your heart. Maybe you once did and you know, you've just walked away and you haven't been where you needed to be. And today you're invited here, you arrived here and you feel a tugging on your heart you, and you wanna step back in. You wanna just recommit your life to Christ. And I wanna encourage you, you are not here by accident. You are here by divine appointment. God saved this moment, prepared this moment for you. So I'm gonna count to three. And on the count of three, I wanna invite you, if that's you, 
to raise your hand and say, Larry, would you include me in that prayer you're gonna pray? We're gonna pray from Romans chapter 10. Verse nine, it says, if you confess and declare with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Number one, know today that God loves you and he cares about you. Two, that he's on your side and he's got a best plan for your life. And number three, would you raise your hand if that's you this morning, I wanna pray with you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Just keep your hand up for a moment. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. I'm gonna ask the whole church to pray with you. This prayer from Romans 10, nine. But perhaps there's one more person who'd say, yes, today I wanna make Jesus the Lord of my life. I wanna rededicate my life. I wanna run my race. Would you raise your hand and join those who already have? Let's pray together this morning. With your hands raised, just open your heart, be sincere. Let's pray together. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead and I accept him into my heart today. Father God, thank you for saving me. Amen. You are now born again. You're washed in the blood and I'm so grateful for your life. God bless you. We love you and enjoy the rest of your day. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Larry. If uh, that message touched you at all, let's give Pastor Larry a great hand. Thank him for the message today. You're all gonna go out and get your aprons right now. You guys looking forward to a great week? Great message, been encouraged, been strengthened. Such a great day. If you made that decision today, if, if you either made it for the first time or, or you recommitted your life, we are so excited for each of you that have made that decision today. And, and we would love to walk this journey with you. And so there's a team when you leave the building just on the left-hand side, there's a next steps area. They'd love to spend some time with you, maybe chat about the decision you've made and, and maybe give you something that will help you on this journey. And, and then you've got, to, got somebody you can chat with next time. When you come and you have questions, they would love to chat with you. So please, Go and meet with them. Go forth, enjoy your week. Have an awesome one. Touch the people in your lives. Draw people towards Jesus through the way that you live.